Hello, and welcome to Storytime Reddit. Today, we're continuing with our story from r slash Surviving Infidelity, the complete saga of the cheating co-writer part three. If you missed part one or two, click the pop-up text in the top right or find the link to the previous and next parts in the video description. And now, part three, beginning with the fifth post. Should be divorced by July, and I cannot wait. Update. Hello again, everyone. It's about six months from my first post on here. In short, out of the blue one day, my wife of five years claimed an ex-boyfriend she used to write with suddenly appeared again, wanting to know if she could work on an old mutual project together. Well, as you might have guessed, she was having an affair that went back for quite a long time. Their dirty emails to each other disgusted me as they were extremely, almost intentionally hurtful. It wasn't bad enough for her to cheat on me, but he said he wanted her to go home and greet me filled with him, so to speak. I held my shit together for the kids for Christmas. She has a daughter, and I have a son. I confronted her, threw her out, and went as no contact as I possibly could. Her affair partner, Chris, sent me a few messages after the fact claiming that I have no reason to be upset because in his eyes, I stole her from him, and he'd been holding this one-sided grudge for the last five years and talked as if we had been enemies for quite some time. In short, my soon-to-be ex's family never approved of him, so she dumped him. She went on to claim they were soulmates, and that's why she couldn't turn him away. Well, I've been keeping my health, working out, continuing to work from home, but that'll be over soon. I've kept contact with my stepdaughter through her grandparents and her biological father, whom she also cheated on with this man, though he's cheated on my soon-to-be ex multiple times. He's an alright guy to have a beer with, and for all his faults, he seems like a good dad. I see her twice a week now, never overnight, and even still I've kept her former room empty because it's too depressing to me to consider doing anything else with it. She's been my princess. She's always excited when she comes to visit or I show up to take her for dinner or for bike rides. After a bit, my son has decided that he thinks he could benefit from therapy and has been seeing a doctor. His mother, my first wife, and I have been keeping a close eye on him as he was pretty close to his stepmother. She's tried to contact him and apologize, but he doesn't want to speak to her. He began getting impulsive and had bouts of angry outbursts unrelated to her, and it was then that I asked him if he thought he might do well with therapy. He told me how betrayed he felt by what she'd done, that he hated her. He missed his stepsister, and he wanted everything to just be erased, and I really felt for him. I don't think we've talked heart to heart or hugged one another in our entire lives more than we have in the past few months. His mother has really been at my side through most of this, and we've gotten a lot closer too. At first she was inviting me over for dinner in a couple days a week because she thought it was unhealthy for me to spend so much time alone in an empty house. I'm around steadily more now, and many nights a week we eat dinner like a family. My folks and her folks have both taken notice of this and have both been asking us whether or not, seeing as things are getting on so well, if we'd consider reconciling. We said we're both happy in things that, with things as they are, but knowing everyone is talking about us makes it difficult for us not to talk about it ourselves. Minus the physical affection, we're basically acting really similar toward one another like we did when we were married, which is comforting and warm, but that's soon going to get to a place where it needs a good long talk about. All that's been said thus far is nothing is going to be attempted or even discussed until our son's life has normalized. These changes hurt him. As for my soon-to-be ex and how things are going on that front, from what I've learned, she's just bought herself a condo and is moving on with her life. Her mother and father are deeply ashamed of what she's done, and in their words, my stepdaughter is frequently back-talking her mom. I'd like to report to you all that she's gravely suffering, or is a weeping mess, but nope. Soon to be ex seems like she's off to go ruin another guy's life. I did, however, cross paths with Chris at a grocery store last month. He turned pale white, and I pointed him out to my brother, which I shouldn't have done. He started following him around and shouting variations of effing Prince Charming over here, that loser's going to eat both those red barons tonight before he starts texting your wife, guys. I forced us to leave and we'll be shopping elsewhere, though I did get a good laugh out of it. Brother, you better buy your brother some red baron pizza because he's a damn king with that. I'm dying here. <laughs> Glad to hear your family is healing. You'll get through this. Give it time. You stay there for your kids, both of them. Good luck. Well, even if you didn't get to drive through his living room, gotta have a little fun. Does your son ever go visit his stepsister? OP. His mother and I arrange it so he can come along with us most of the time. They played stuff like Minecraft together. I feel so bad for them. At least if they were blood related, they could stick together through this. I don't understand, now that everything is out in the open, why can't she get back to this Chris guy if they are soulmates? She would find another guy and then cheat on him with that Chris guy again. 
is that Chris guy completely broke? Is she trying to get as much as she can suck off of other guys before permanently going back with Chris? I just never understood what goes through their mind. OP. I suspect she loves this human trash can, but her father hates him, so no dice. Her father is an actual ship captain, or was rather. He's a good guy, but what he says is law. Chris rubbed him the wrong way for some reason, and he's not quiet about it. Chris isn't broke, he owns a house at least, or he's renting it. Either way, it's the decent part of town, so whatever, it ain't cheap. I wonder why he never approved of Chris. Probably just a good judge of character in this case. And now for the sixth post and update. Update, somewhat. Just digging around an old laptop and came across this gem of a conversation. I've changed the names, but here's basically a cut and paste version of how deceitful these two were. New ex-wife. I'm not sure if I'm being paranoid, but I feel like my husband is growing suspicious. I don't know what I should do. I'm trying to act normal, but I'm really starting to worry. Probably just paranoid. He's not tracking my phone or computer or anything. He does try to look over my shoulder or take peeks at my screen, though. I don't stop him when he does. All the time he has peeked, we weren't talking about anything worth suspicion. Chris. I think the best way to go about this is to not change your routine. If you get any more distant, he might catch on, but if you become too friendly, same logic applies. If you could do anything, I would say perhaps talk about the story like in a complete professional way and exclude me from it when you do. So it will seem more like a business-friendly relationship rather than an old boyfriend. But I don't know him. I met him that one time. Usually, I have the honor of sizing up the other half's mental capacity, but I'm flying blind with this and completely trusting you. I say you remain exactly as you are, no change in routine, unless you think the book's suggestion works. New ex-wife. Okay, that's exactly what I was thinking. Good, good. He can be a genius or a complete idiot, and he is very reserved, so sometimes his body language is hard to read. But yes, I need to start talking about the book, because I think he's wondering why I'm on here all the time with you. I haven't mentioned the book at all. Chris. Make an offhand remark. Oh, he's goddamn whining about his boyfriend again. He needs to leave the prick. I know he lives in Wisconsin. Stop whining about it. New ex-wife. No, he thinks you're still married and have a son, and you're one of my old writing friends. That's pretty much all I've said about you aside from our fling at the end of ex-husband's name. Chris. Okay, well if you have to, or the subject gets brought up, think of some small romantic cheesy gesture I just did for my wife, and say I look like a sissy for it. <laughs> The best way I'm not a threat is if my family and yours are somewhat relatable. The more domestic I appear, the better. New ex-wife. Yeah, I agree, but I don't want to start talking about you lots either. I haven't in the past, why should I now? If he asks, I'll make up stuff on the fly. Chris. Exactly. New ex-wife. I think I'll start getting excited about the book now. That way, if I seem giddy or stressed, I can use that as an excuse. Chris. When you do, mention my wife is doing concept art for it, and that's one of the reasons it excites you. It is not a stretch. It establishes I am domestic and that she is well aware of my activities, and if she's not worried, why should he be? New ex-wife. Yeah, I see that. Okay, I can handle this. It's probably all in my own head anyways. Chris. Yes, it probably is. If an accusation comes at all, just have something ready like, no, oh my god, he's married and he's retardedly obsessed with his wife. He was telling me all his pet names and I almost signed off, lol. New ex-wife. Lol, okay. Chris. Sorry, I have a lot of ready-made plots. The smurf is usually checking my phone. There's nothing. New ex-wife. We're not new at this. Chris. Well, it won't be nearly as complicated, seeing as any change in your behavior will only be momentary. New ex-wife. True. I think I can do this. Chris. You'll be fine. We've done it before. New ex-wife. No, I know I can do this. Chris. You've got it. New ex-wife. In my obsessive compulsive nature, it is taking like everything in me to not make a list of things to do before our adventure. LOL. I usually hide all my flaws, but no, you get to see and hear about all of them. LOL, you poor thing. You must think I'm neurotic. Chris. I like seeing this side of you. I don't think you're neurotic, but the paranoia, the planning, your excitement makes me feel good that I can still excite you this much. New ex-wife. For your sake, I'll let you take credit for most of that then. I'm paranoid without reason also, but you've most certainly elevated it to a new level.
I'm going to be real honest. Computer forensics was my favorite class at school. I always had a good time getting data bit by bit and figuring out what it was. That being said, I'm an IT security consultant now. People really don't know how much data they are leaving around on their devices. And no, running a magnet over the hard drive won't work anymore. It is truly disturbing to see what people will talk about while they are betraying another, whether it be a corporate thing or a personal thing. If you can talk yourself into it, there's not a lot of things you won't do. Should you had to see the exact level of depravity your partner stooped to this much later? OP. I mean, I read other conversations between them, but this one sounds like the earliest of them. Yeah, plotting it out and bragging about it? Effing scummy. Sorry you had to deal with that level of garbage. Hopefully you're in an at-fault state and can use this for protection. OP. I live in California. You're basically rewarded for being a degenerate here. Sorry two times then. You couldn't drag me to California. Not saying my state is perfect, because it's not, but eesh. OP. California. If it wasn't for the beach sunsets and my son, I'd have been gone a decade ago. Holy shit, this affair partner demonstrates at every turn that this is not his first rodeo. It's glaringly obvious that he wants to keep the affair as is, no interest in her, only concern over getting caught and losing his supply. Your wife lowered her standards all the way down to this bottom feeder? I will never understand cheaters. It's like watching someone trying to become rich at the roulette wheel. With each spin, they forfeit more and more of the thing they are chasing. Dopes. OP. No, he's very much in love with her. He even wrote me an angry letter after the discovery saying things like, she should have been my wife, but you took that from me and I was forced into sneaking around with her like this. This was how I had to see the woman. I loved in any capacity. She ghosted me when she started dating you. So don't go on this pity party that I stole her. You stole her. Do you want this poison in your life? OP. I threw her out months ago. I found this this afternoon while going through some of the stuff she didn't take with her. Just shows you how stupid, selfish, and childish they were. You final yet? OP. On the 26th, this ride is finally over. And now for the seventh post and final update. It's been a year since D-Day. There's been kidnapping, assault, and hospitalization since my last post. Update. I have two ex-wives. To avoid confusion, I will be referring to my latest ex-wife as ex-wife and my first ex-wife as my son's mother. This week, a year ago, I was sitting around trying to process my ex-wife telling me about her ex, Chris, approaching her with aspirations of writing a book based of their previous work together. It was an obvious front to further their ongoing affair, and I was so stupid not to see it. Anyhow, I confronted her and threw her out, and she went to live with her parents, taking her stepdaughter with her. I maintain contact with my stepdaughter for quite some time and still do make time for her, but she's had it worse than anyone. I guess I'll give an update to that first. My stepdaughter was essentially kidnapped by her biological father sometime after my last update. I've said it before, but her father is not from my country and has citizenship from the country he came from. Every couple of years, he would take his daughter to his country to see his family, but this time he refused to send her back home. His given reason was that our mutual ex-wife was poison and he wanted his daughter away from her. In the end, he shot himself in the foot on that front because two months later, he caved to pressure from his own family and sent her back, and is not returning because he'll most likely be arrested if he returns to the States. So he removed himself as a good influence in her life and left her in the hands of someone we both consider poison. Things did not get better from there on my ex's side of things. Shortly after the divorce was finalized, but before her ex-husband ran off with the child, she had begun dating a new man, I was unaware of this until my former in-laws contacted me to say that she'd been hospitalized. She and Chris, her affair partner, had, as many guessed, began sleeping together again, and from what former mother-in-law told me, she broke it off with him again to pursue a new man. Chris took her to a Motel 6, where he sprung it on her that he was sick of being treated how he was treated. When she tried to walk back to her car, he snapped, picked her up over his head, and slammed her down on the concrete parking lot. He attacked and drove off a good Samaritan before stomping on one of her hands and then choking her so hard she had dark purple bruises and a fractured vertebrae in her neck. Thankfully, he's behind bars now and is facing a slew of assault charges and perhaps even attempted murder, but I've not followed up on the legal aspects of any of it. She is in physical therapy and in recovery as she was also concussed in the assault and is pretty hazy a lot of the time. No matter what she did to me, seeing her in this condition breaks my heart. My stepdaughter spends a lot of time with me these days as I am trying to do what I can to help the situation. She is understandably not in the best spirits, but spending time with my son, my son's mother and I, at least gives her a solid place to stand. That just leaves my first wife, my son's mother. 
a lot of people have expressed a desire to see us reconcile, and in many ways, we have. Neither of us is pushing the other back into a relationship, but we have discussed our past, the infidelity that separated us, and the fact that she has been forgiven by me. We aren't officially back together, but it isn't uncommon for us to spend the night at each other's place, and as we speak, it's been five days since we've slept in different houses. We sleep separately, as I'm sure this all confuses my son, but we've been intimate regularly for over a month now. It's going nice and easy, nobody is pushing for anything more than what we have, and for the moment, it's working out. I could go on for many more paragraphs, but I think I'll wrap up this update and answer questions as they come. As I predicted exactly, comment made on your previous thread, that your ex-wife keeps Chris around like a pet. He is also a victim to your poison of an ex-wife. Only this time, the pet became unruly and attacked his abusive owner. OP. He didn't look like the kind to be body slamming people in parking lots. He did what he did, but my ex is determined to ruin lives. Karma got her. OP. Karma was me throwing her out of her home and her reputation getting dragged through the mud on the account of the affair. What Chris did to her wasn't karma. That's just an abusive psychopath right there. So you're just friends with benefits with your ex? Very confusing for your child. And I hope you're considering your ex's feelings here too. If she wants more, but you do not, then it's a bit disserviced and ultimately re-traumatizes your son with so much change. I hope y'all are talking about what y'all are doing and what your feelings are instead of just rug sweeping and letting things happen. Your son has been through so much garbage. He doesn't deserve to be put through more intentionally or unintentionally. OP. My ex and I are careful not to be domestically affectionate beyond the bounds of what we already were when my son is around. For instance, if they are at my place, she sleeps in the guest room. If we're at her place, I'll crash on the couch, and if I don't feel like driving home late. We've only been physical when he's at school and are careful not to act like we're a couple when he or my stepdaughter is around. Believe me, we both know the damage this could do, and we're doing what we can so we can have our fun and test the waters of being together again without hurting him by giving his hopes up. I do consider what she wants, and if she wants more than what is going on, we can sit down and talk about how and if that's going to happen. I don't get it. You left a cheater to be with another cheater? Seriously, man? Billions of women out there, and it feels like you are wasting your time again. If I recall correctly, his son's mother had a one-night stand while drunk, took full responsibility, made no excuses, remained good friends with him. Unlike his ex-wife, the serial cheater, now it is legitimate to state that they are both cheaters, but his son's mother really worked on herself afterwards. I could be wrong about that, but I seem to recall that. OP. This is the case. Has your ex tried to talk to you? Do you know if she regrets? Other than therapy, how is she doing with your ex? Your stepdaughter, what thinks of your ex? I hope you can continue to support your stepdaughter. OP. I have two exes, so these questions are a little unclear. Question one. My latest ex-wife has talked to me a lot, especially when my stepdaughter was missing. She does regret doing what she did, or said she is. She gets dramatic about it, and I don't really care to hear her side anymore, so I tune out. Question three-ish. What does my ex think about my son's mom? She likes her well enough. They always kind of got along. Not sure she's aware that we've been sleeping together. Don't really care what she thinks of that. Question four. My stepdaughter likes my son's mother, is very sad at the state of her own mother, and is very upset with her over our marriage ending. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I hope you'll come again soon. Bye for now.